And we're live! Woohoo! Monica Corrado here, the Gap Chef. Thank you to everyone for joining me. Um, what can I tell you? Uh, I am a certified Gaps practitioner. I am on Dr. Natasha's teaching team. Um, I just published the second edition of my fabulous book. Textbook, folks, if you want to learn how to cook for the GAPS diet, everything you need is in this particular book. So check it out. If you want to save some money on that, use the following code, NEWGAPS2023. All right, so everything I say on this uh, little video is, um, what can we say? Everything I say say it differently. Nothing I say has been approved by the FDA and uh, I cannot claim anything about healing anything. Just letting you know. So welcome, welcome to Ask the Gap Chef. If you're new to the group, welcome to the group. I really encourage you to look through all of the fabulous conversations we've been having for the last year or so. Uh, do use the search function um, I also encourage everyone uh, in the group to read at least the yellow book, if not the yellow book and the blue book. Um, that is Gut and Psychology Syndrome and Gut and Physiology Syndrome. What else? I also really encourage you to jump on gaps.me, which is Dr. Natasha's website, the FAQs on the right-hand side of the page will tell you so many things. Dr. Natasha has answered so many questions for you. Please look there before posting because there's a lot of really good information there. Okay, so here we are. Let's see. Again, welcome, welcome. Monica Corrado here. My website is simplybeingwell.com. Check that out. Um, what else can I tell you? I'm really happy to announce that I will be offering level one learn to cook classes live with me at least once this year, maybe twice. Um, and I will post that on the page as soon as I have registration information available. What other little tiny piece of information for you all? GAPS online conference, third annual, woohoo! Third annual GAPS OnCon uh, next weekend, the 16th, 17th, and 18th. So we're only nine days out, folks. Um, it's going to be great. Everything will be taped, filmed. If you can't watch it because you're in another time zone or you're working, you can get on and watch those recordings uh, for at least a month or more afterwards. Please do join us, GAPS OnCon. 2023. It's all about gaps in the real world. You're going to love it. I just filmed for it on uh, Saturday. So exciting! Back in the saddle. Love that teaching. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Let's say hello to everybody. Okay. So welcome to everyone, whether you're new to the group or you're an old timer. That doesn't mean you're old. You've just been here with me a long time. Hello, Hamda. Hello, Uma. Hello, Farya. Hello, Carol, Brianna, hello, 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 Dawn, hello, Dill, hello, Yasmin. Yes, sending love for Maryland. Yay! Give my love to Maryland. You know I love Maryland. Okay. Um, hello, Fatima. Hello, 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 Lee. Lee is with us too. Hi. How do you do? All right. So. <clears throat> Pardon me, a couple of days ago, maybe last week, I posted on the page um, on our group to let me know what you need help with, what are your challenges in the kitchen, etc., etc. Um, and so I've been looking at some of those, and I'd like to tackle some of those um, every time we have a, uh, uh, we do a Facebook Live. I think that would be fun. Fun for me, good for you, tra-la, tra -la. let's get all the information out. So the first thing I'd like to do is talk about cooking. And I want to talk about cooking because a lot of you are spending a lot of time in the kitchen. And because GAPS requires homemade food. 
And because we live in a culture where, sadly, a lot of people eat a lot of takeout, whether that's from the hot bar at Whole Foods, that's not actually organic and has a lot of bad fats in it, folks, just letting you know. Soy oil, canola oil is a staple on those hot bars. Um, so whether you're picking it up at a hot bar at a Whole Foods Market or you are, uh, or people are, you know, picking up from a DoorDash or who knows what, uh, food that is made in a restaurant, etc. Food that is not made in our homes. We are so used to eating food out. We're used to grabbing food, grab and go, etc., etc. Hot bars, etc., etc. Starbucks, ah, um, etc., etc. So sadly, we live in a culture where uh, making homemade food really went by the wayside after World War II long time ago and wonderfully both the Weston A. Price Foundation um, and uh, GAPS is encouraging you to teach, to go and uh, cook real food and to source real food and one of the strengths of the GAPS diet is uh, is the fact that it it encourages us it invites us it requires us to source real food and to source clean food and to grow our own food or to um, get involved with a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture, or get involved uh, in a community garden or uh, find farmers who are growing clean food for you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, we're all about sourcing real food and then getting in the kitchen. So again, I start this conversation with you because we're in a culture that really is built uh, to, uh, to make it hard to get in the kitchen. A lot of people in the U.S. and around the world, both, both partners are, uh, are working full time and sometimes it's more than full time. And so, uh, again, after World War II, all sorts of things happened to our food supply. Lots of military uh, applications were brought into the consumer sector, meaning things like freeze drying came. Uh, later on, microwaving came. Uh, later on, lots of uh, shelf stable shelf stable foods came in with canning. Right? So lots of dead food coming into the U.S. and other food supplies after World War II. We're talking in the early 50s. That was a long time ago. That was before I was born. Yikes! So we have a culture that is not, that is really about work all the time, but don't be in the kitchen because being in the kitchen is too much work. Ah! So let's talk about GAPS and uh, cooking for GAPS. So a long time ago, 2010, almost 13 years ago because it was in October or November, I believe, I taught a class on fitting, fitting, um, what the heck did I call it? Sorry. Fitting, uh, traditional foods into your busy life. Something like that. I taught a class. It was an all-day cooking class at the Weston A. Price Foundation Wise Traditions Conference. It was in Valley Forge, PA at the time, and it was the first all-day cooking class they did, and I taught and taught and taught. How do you fit? Ah, here is it. Fitting nourishing traditional food into your busy life. We might as well have said fitting gaps food into your busy life because GAPS food is nourishing traditional food. It's nourishing food that's prepared in traditional ways. So uh, I'm going to bring a little bit of that to us today and then I'll take whatever questions you have about whatever else. So here's what I suggest to you. Think about those things that you are using in the GAPS diet uh, and this will differ depending on um, the size of your family 
depending on how many people are doing gaps, etc. So you'll have to think a little bit about that. But for the most part, people, when you're doing gaps, again, and whether you're on intro or full, right? So where are you? How many people are on gaps? At what stage are you? La la la, etc. But for the most part, people who are on the gaps diet are going to be eating several things. These are the things you need, and let's talk about how to get them into your life so that you're not in the kitchen all the time. So let's start actually with the things that you can prep in advance, like a year in advance. What could you be doing a year in advance? Or what could you be doing once a quarter? So I suggest that you get a little notepad and you start taking some notes if you want to, if that will serve you and that you start thinking about calendar, your calendar. I, um, when I taught this class, again, almost 13 years ago, at the time we talked about day timers. People had day timers. Those were calendars that you, I'm going like this because it was a book and you wrote down, right? You write down, oh, I have a dentist appointment on this day. Oh, I have a doctor's appointment on this day. Oh, I need to take the car in to change the oil on this day. Oh, I need to pick up the children to go to the swim meet on this day, right? What do we do? We do it now on our phones. A lot of people do it on calendars. They do it on day timers, but they write down the things that you need to be doing, right? Like right now, you're with me on Facebook, right? On my calendar, I have Facebook Live every Tuesday, and I know that that's where I'm supposed to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage you all to start if you're not doing it already, and you may be, and if you are, hats off to you, kudos, all those good things. But a lot of people haven't thought of it this way. Much of success in cooking for gaps happens when uh, you plan for it. So you plan for it and you put it on your calendar. And so what I encourage you to do, folks, instead of being in the kitchen all day, every day, which I hear a lot of, there's no reason for all day, every day, folks. I know, crazy. Am I crazy? No, I'm serious. So there's no reason for cooking all day, every day. Let's look at the things that you need for gaps and then let's get them on the calendar. So I'm going to think about a couple of things that you could do, frankly, once a year. Once a year, you could put up multiple quarts of sauerkraut. Once a year. Because why? We love sauerkraut that's old because it's low in histamine. That's better for everyone. Okay? So once a year and once every quarter, that's every three months, you could put up, that's just a fancy word to say, make, quarts and quarts and quarts of ferments. So once a year, sauerkraut goes up. Once a quarter, all the rest of your ferments go up. They could be fermented beets. They could be vegetable medley. They could be kimchi. They could be um, fermented garlic. They could be fermented anything. Once a quarter, you can put up your ferments. Put it on your calendar, right? Once a quarter, that's once every three months. You make a new bunch of ferments. The amount of quarts that you're going to make is going to be determined by how many people are in your family and how many people are eating ferments. So that's one thing to do. What else could you do? Once a quarter, again, pick a day, block out three or four hours. You could make all of the tallow and or lard that you need for that quarter. No joke. Easy peasy, right? So make all your fats. Make them, render them, melt them down, and then put them in jars that you can keep in the refrigerator or in just cold store, cool basement, wine cellar, root cellar, um, somewhere cool, uh, and then all your fats are done. Okay. What's next? So we've talked about ferments. We've talked about fats. Let's talk about cultured dairy. Again, 
some of those fats could be ghee. You could make your ghee once a quarter, folks. Just take a day and make it all and you've got enough for a quarter, meaning three month period. Okay, let's talk about cultured dairy. Cultured dairy is a little bit more challenging because you need to make your cultured dairy more often. So let's talk about which ones. Thinking, thinking, thinking. So let's start with cultured cream. Cultured cream, you could put up enough cultured cream once every two weeks. That'd be great. You could put up enough yogurt once every two weeks to get you through. You could put up enough kefir you're going to make every day. But that takes, what, five minutes? Three minutes? No time to make kefir. I mean, literally, you take the grains out of the last one, you put them in a new jar, you put in new water. Pardon, God help me, sorry. Put in new milk. <laughs> Oops, I'm not talking about water kefir here. We're talking about milk kefir. So um, literally every day, five minutes to make new kefir. No big whoop. So there's your cultured dairy. So we've already gone through um, ferments, fats, cultured dairy. All right. What else do we need to do? Meat stock. Meat stock. Again, we know, I hope you all know, that meat stock is a meal, or it can be, depending on what's going on with your digestive system. Again, if you come to GAPS and you have lots of diarrhea and you have ulcerative colitis or you have Crohn's disease or any of those things, you want to be making no plant meat stock, right? That's meat with water, that's it, okay? And then you strain it and you drink the stock and you eat the meat. Anyone else could be making meat stock as a meal, which is what I always encourage. Why? Because it's easy, it's fast, and it's a meal. So. Literally everyone, this is why I have a beautiful Dutch oven on your free to you downloadable intro diet chart. That's why I have a beautiful Dutch oven, Dutch oven, right? What's in that Dutch oven? That's a chicken and vegetables and peppercorns and water. That's a meal folks. Please make meat stock as a meal. If you do that, you can eat it that way. Intro, stage one, two, three, four, five, six. You can do it, you can eat it that way, all of full gaps. There's no reason for this to be difficult for people. So I really encourage you, get yourself a Dutch oven, um, which is at least four quarts, six to eight quarts is better. A Dutch oven just means it's a big heavy pot that has a lid that can put go in the oven or on the stove. Okay, and what could you make? Every night you could make a different meat stock and you could feed your family. You eat the meat, you drink the stock, you eat the veggies, you add on more fat, you've now had your meat stock for the day and you've had a meal. I have to tell you folks, I, I'm kind of a busy gal and I know all of you are busy too. So why not make this so easy for us? Right? So the only reason you need to be cooking every day in the, in the, or cooking on a daily basis is to make your meat stock, which means maybe you're going to have chicken meat stock for dinner. Maybe you're going to have lamb. Maybe you're going to have beef. Maybe you're going to have buffalo. Maybe you're going to have goat. Maybe you're going to have turkey. Maybe you're going to have fish. You can have any of those combined with any of the GAPS uh, uh, vegetables cut uh, in the size that will, um, you know, bite size, uh, and any beautiful herbs that you love, fresh herbs, organic herbs, non-irradiated herbs. Easy peasy. Why would it need to be any more difficult than that? So, so I just, you know, I, I, I'm so sad that so many people are struggling in the kitchen all day long. There's no reason to struggle in the kitchen all day long, everybody. Um, you can put up a batch of chicken meat stock. It takes an hour and a half to two hours or three hours to cook. Yay, dinner's ready. 
put it up at 4. You're eating at 5.30. Um, you want to do beef? Mm, put it up at 2. You're eating at 6. Right? You want to do lamb? Put it up at 2. You're eating at 6. You want to do pork? Put it up at 2. You're eating at 6. Right? So there's only two things you really need to be doing every day in the kitchen. And sometimes if you make, if you're, if either your family is small enough, maybe there's only one of you or two of you, two of you, um, or you have a big enough Dutch oven where it's eight quarts instead of four quarts, you could make your meat stock on Monday and eat it on Tuesday and Wednesday. So I go through all of this in my book, um, folks. <clears throat> Let's just take a look, shall we? I want to look at how I, where this is actually written out for all of you. I'm looking in my new book. Yeah. So <clears throat> on page 52 of the new book, I say why we love meat stock leftovers. Seven variations on a theme. Number one, right? Just reheat what you've made and eat it again. Number two, pick the meat off the bones, put the meat back in the, stock, in the pot, now you have stew. Number three, right? Anyway, I've got all sorts of ways to take that meat stock and make it into a different meal. That's page uh, 52 in the new spiral bound hardcover book. Anyway, folks, so <clears throat> in terms of nuts and seeds, again, folks, I would be, if you are including nuts and seeds in your diet, which many people are not, either because they haven't reached stage three in, in intro and they're not doing nut butter yet, or because they haven't reached stage four and they're not doing baked goods yet, or because they just want to stay off nuts and seeds because they can feed yeast, no problem. But if you're doing nuts and seeds, folks, <clears throat> I got to tell you, you can do those once every six months, right? Just schedule a day. Or schedule two days, once every six months, where you are soaking in water and salt or you are sprouting uh, lots of different nuts and then put them in, um, you can dehydrate them. If you have a dehydrator, you can crisp them in your oven. Um, you can sun dry them, frankly, depending on where you live. And then you just put them in containers, airtight containers, in a cool, dark place. Some people freeze them to make sure that they don't go rancid, make sure they are dry if you're going to put them in a jar or a airtight container. So again, once every six months, do the nuts. If you're going through a lot of nuts, do it once a quarter, right? In any case, I hope that's helpful to you folks. I, um, I know that GAPS is really revolutionary. It is very different. We are asking you to source real food, which the majority of people on the earth, or at least Americans, are not doing. We are asking you to learn how to cook real food, which maybe your mother didn't do, and maybe your grandmother didn't do, but most of our grandmothers did. Grandmothers and great-grandmothers did. That's why I love to teach cooking, because I want you all to feel e at ease in the kitchen right? These are traditional cooking techniques that have been done since humans started cooking. Soaking, sprouting, fermenting nuts and seeds, fermenting vegetables and fruits, right? Making, cooking meat in water. That's what meat stock is. Yeah. Fermenting and culturing dairy so it's digestible. Okay, I hope that helps everyone. I hope that helps. So I'm gonna go ahead and take questions now and um, I will visit our page and start taking, uh, make a big list of what you all are needing to hear and then I'll announce them that on this day we'll talk about this and that day we'll talk about that and then you can tell all your friends and come on down and let's talk about all the things that, you, that you'd like to learn so that you can do gaps more easily. Okay, one more thing I didn't say at the beginning is that my desire in this forum, if you will, uh, this Facebook group and this uh, Facebook Live is to accurately represent the teachings, Dr. Natasha's writings, teachings, my understanding of what she is, uh, what she's got 
in the GAPS protocol. So that's my desire is to accurately represent and present to you uh, my understanding of the diet. I do teach with Dr. Natasha several times during the year and um, very blessed to be able to do that. She's an amazing, amazing human being with a tremendous heart and she's helped so many people. Anyway, okay, so let's move on. Let's see if anybody's got questions. All right, la, 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 la. Okay, hello, Iklas. Hello, Laura. Hello, Roseanne. Hello, honey. Hello, Umusumaya. I hope I got that right. Musumaya, I hope so. Hello, Muna. Hiya, Muna. Hello, Deka Muhammad. Hello, Marie. Hello, Tara. Tara, that was for you, girl. And everybody else who asked the question. Do you use the enamel coated Dutch oven? Yes, I do. I have, um, I am blessed to have two Le Creuset um, blue Dutch ovens um, that I love. One is a four quart and it's round and one is a uh, six quart and it's oval and they serve me very, very well. Yep. Hello, Yasmin. Yes, thank you for that tip about the meat stock with the vegetables. You are welcome. Hello, Samira. Hi, Dawn. So I cannot have the stock or just a, I don't know. So I cannot have stock. C come back to me, Dawn. I'm not sure what you're saying there. Oh, so I can hardly have any stock because of too much die off. It seems that if I just eat the meat that was cooked in stock, it feels like, feels like just that meat cooked in stock causes a die off. Is that likely? I don't think so, Dawn, but um, my understanding... Let me start in a different place. <clears throat> Let us remember that all nutrient-dense foods can cause die-off. Okay? I don't know why someone just threw two angry faces on there. Um, my understanding is that uh, any nutrient-dense food can cause die-off. Why? Because you are feeding the body nutrients and because... Um, old dead salt, old dead salt, I can't speak today, old dead cells are dying off, pathogenic bacteria are dying off when your body starts becoming more and more robust and it's able to thrive and it's given the building blocks it needs, things are going to start happening, the body will detoxify, etc. So I hope that helps. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, said all. Hello, Rosa. Hello, Carola. Hello, Dawn. Great to have you. Hello, Laura. Okay. I hope that's helpful. Okay, let's see. Uh, Tara said, I ordered your new book and it has not shipped yet. Cannot wait. Yay, Tara. I think you'll love it. It's a great book, I have to say. I know it's my book, but it is a great book. Okay, <clears throat> let's see what else. La, 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 la. Okay. Hello. So if we add whey to organic peanut butter from the store fermented, is that easier for digestion? So Laura, this question did come up. Um, the best way to make organ to make fermented nut butter is to actually ferment the nuts and then pulverize them into butter. That will give you the best uh, product. It will give you the most fermented product, if you will. My understanding is that it is hard to ferment nut butter itself that's already been made because you can try it and you can do it, but uh, you're going to have to really, really, really mix it very, very well to make sure that you get enough whey in there, if you will, because nut butter is very dense. So my preferred way, my preferred process would be to get the nuts or seeds you want and then ferment them and then pulverize into nut butter. That would be the best for your body. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Hope that was helpful. Edil, hello, says my five-year-old who is on the intro diet for a couple of months now started having a meltdown every time since she is hungry. Since last week. I don't know if it is a parasite or blood sugar, but we are struggling. Okay, so everyone that's hungry needs more fat. 
I'm seeing this on the page a lot, folks, that, you know, my child's on this stage or that stage or blah, 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 and they're hungry all the time. More fat, more fat. How do we get satiated? More fat. Remember that the definition of fat is very broad. What does that mean? Butter, ghee made from butter, cultured cream, very high in fat, whether it's cultured with yogurt or with um, kefir, kefir, kefir cream, um, tallow, which is fat from beef, bison, lamb, goats, venison, right? Tallow, chicken fat, duck fat, goose fat, you name it, lard, fat from pigs. So lots of fat. Please make sure everyone's having enough fat. If you think you're having enough fat, have more. If your child or you are having problems with nausea, start introducing GAPS milkshakes to help the gallbladder. Start introducing ox bile, which is a supplement that's fine to take on GAPS while you are uh, developing a tolerance for fat. So more and more fat. If you're hungry, you need more fat. Okay? So meltdown every time she is hungry. Usually that's a, that can also be a blood sugar drop. So how do we get blood sugar stabilized? Fat, right? So you can make the blood sugar stabilizer, everyone, which is um, <clears throat> softened butter, pastured butter, cultured butter, softened and add some raw honey a little bit. Eat that all day long. Give that to your five-year-old. So it may be blood sugar, um, and remembering that blood sugar can uh, destabilize with too many carbohydrates. What's a carbohydrate? Anything that's not fat or protein. So, too much fruit equals too many carbohydrates, perhaps. Right, folks? Uh, too many lentils? Too much carbohydrate, folks. So, um... Please make sure that you are liberally giving your children and yourselves enough fat, everyone. That means tablespoons at a time. Fat, 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 fat. As much as they want. Let them have butter and lard and uh, tallow and cultured cream, etc. Lots of fat. Okay? Okay. All right, let's see what else we've got. Hello, Umu. Okay, fabulous. Let's see. Hello, Eva. Lovely to have you. Yay. All right. Good, good. You're welcome, Edel. I hope that's helpful. Hello, Natasha. Hello, Leonie. Hello, Constance. Hello, everyone. Okay. Hello, hello. All right, let's see. What do we need now? Dill says, my baby is on GAP solids and so far had meat stock once a day. For the rest, she's exclusively breastfed. Excellent. Make sure you're breastfeeding first and then give the meat stock. Okay. However, she is now a few days constipated. Since she is now getting something else, meat stock in addition to breast milk, should I be doing enemas for her or anything else to help move her bowels? So a couple things. Number one, um, Dr. Natasha says that sometimes breastfed babies don't have a bowel movement every day. So should be fine if you're skipping a day or so. You can also start baby on enemas if you would like. That would be fine to do. Please do check the blue book under bowel management. There's a lot there. The yellow book also has a lot in terms of working with babies. Um what types of enemas to do. So you could do that. That's wonderful. Make sure that your baby is also getting fat. I don't know how old your baby is, Dill, but I would add lots of fats to the meat stock if it's not fatty and already. All right, let's see. Braylon, sorry, I was pouring broth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wonder what was going on. Um, pouring broth and my daughter's repressing the angry faces for fun. No problem. As long as I didn't say something that someone was angry about and they didn't tell me. Okay. Hello, Marie. How long would the broth for meat stock last in the refrigerator if there's a thin layer of fat on top of it? Again, I address this in my book about how long, uh, it's in the FAQs, but I'll tell you here. 
The length of time that the stock itself will last in the refrigerator depends on two things. Mm, for the most part. If I get another one, I'll let you know. Two things. One, if you strain it out and you just put the broth or the stock in a jar and put it in the refrigerator, that will last much longer in the refrigerator than, ah, there's three things, I knew it, uh, much longer in the refrigerator uh, than if you put it in with stock and vegetables and meat. Okay, it tends to last longer, number one. Number two, if there is a layer of fat on it, a nice layer of fat, and the layer of fat has not been uh, broken, it's, a, it's sealed with fat, hard layer of fat, golly gee willikers, that could last a week, two weeks, three weeks, long time in your refrigerator. Um, the third thing is uh, if it has gelled. So if the stock has been strained or not, and it's gelled and it's a solid block of gel, which of course all of us have had happen, I'm sure. And then that's covered with meat, with fat, I'm sorry. It's covered with fat. That can last a week, two weeks in the refrigerator. How do you know if your stock has gone off? Um, smell it. Use your nose. Your nose will know. You'll be like, ugh, smells bad. Throw it out. Um, one of the tools we have, or the tricks we have, uh, from Sally Fallon and Dr. Natasha, both say this, is to, um, you can, at five to seven days, you can uh, put the stock back on the, um, on the stove, bring it to a boil, skim and discard any scum, and then you'll get another three or four or five days in the refrigerator. But that's really important. Uh, if it's sealed with fat, folks, um, your stock will last a lot longer. So the short answer is at least five to seven days. Use your schnoz, getting lots of hearts. Maybe that's the children again. Uh, use your nose and also use your eyes. If you see little white, um, I don't know, dots, spots, particles on the uh, inside of the jar, it's probably molded and it's, it's gone. So use your nose, use your eyes. And then ultimately, if, um, <clears throat> if you're not sure and you put your stock on the stove and you bring it to a boil and it just keeps foaming like foam like bath foam right it foams and you can't get that off then it's probably been compromised and you want to throw it out another little tip there hope that's helpful marie and everyone else okay laura asks in stage four when we start juicing if all good do we juice every day yes we juice every day and we juice twice a day you want to start with a teaspoon of juice every day for your child work up to a cup in the morning and then a cup in the afternoon as a snack um yes a cup is eight ounces everyone so remembering that juice should only be taken on an empty stomach and that dr natasha um defines empty stomach as 20 to 25 minutes prior to a meal, <clears throat> pardon me, or two to two and a half hours after eating. So juicing only uh, on an empty stomach, please. Okay. La 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 la. Let's see what else is happening here. You're welcome. La 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 la. Look at all this. All right, I better get moving. Do people need to be let in? I can't hear anything. Everyone is, else is hearing, Leonie, so I don't know. Check it out. The hearts was you. Okay, perfect. Rosa wants to know, I've sent several requests. I can't hear anything. I don't know, my dear, why you can't hear. Um, I can see that the microphone is working. Okay. Rosa says, do you need to put the beets on the gut shake? My daughter doesn't like the juice. Yes, a small piece of beetroot is part of a gaps milkshake. Um, start with less. 
remember that now I just I just filmed on Saturday folks some of you saw that photo I'm teaching juicing juicing smoothies and gaps milkshakes for the Oncon so join me there you'll get a lot of these answers there it'll be wonderful um, the reason we add beet is because it is a cleanser it's a blood cleanser liver cleanser etc and um, yes Tara says turn off your Bluetooth if you can't hear excellent all right um, yeah I would just start with remembering we do 50% therapeutic and then 50% good tasting for your daughter good tasting would be like orange mango apple um, things that are good okay where can we join the Oncon okay Rosa and everyone else go to Gaps, G A P S, Oncon, O N C N. Um, you can also find it under featured posts on our page. You just hit that picture of the Gaps Oncon and you can register there. You can save money if you put M Corrado, that's me, M C O R R A D O 23. You'll save some money there. Okay, let's go here. What else do we have? Okay. Wow, look at all this. All right, I better get to you all. Yasmin says, if we do more fat and we have more liver, we have issues waking up the liver hours of the night and we get constipated. Any suggestions? Acupuncture is my best suggestion for anyone that's op waking up during liver time. Everybody go and get acupuncture on a regular basis. If it's children, acupressure on a regular basis. Um, that is just telling you that your liver needs more support. So how about some more detox baths? How about some castor oil packs on your liver? That's also under featured posts on this page. You can figure out how to do that. Um, how about some milk thistle tea? How about some dandelion leaf in your salads? Those types of things support the liver for sure by, de by, by encouraging detoxification. All right. And if you get constipated, enemas, enemas, enemas. All right. Okay, Rosa. Hello, hello. For the almond butter, do you need to dry the fermented almonds before processing? No, but they can't be soaking wet either. So you don't have to dehydrate them fully, but you do have to make sure they're not wet. So I would, you don't have to crisp them fully, but make sure that they're not soaking wet or else, again, what are you making? Nut butter, which is fat. Water and fat do not, right? They, they don't work well together. So make sure they're at least dry. Um, but not necessarily crisped or dehydrated. They should just not be wet. Okay. Botox. I hope you're saying borax. Is there a substitute for borax for the laundry soap? Hmm. Not sure, Dawn. Let me look at that. Uh, there's a lot of things for laundry soap. Did we put that on the page yet? Let me write down laundry soap. I don't think I did. Laundry soap. We had a great laundry soap recipe on Gaps Chat uh, months ago. Ask the guy. Okay, I'll, I'm writing it down. All right. Brea Lynn says, yipes, look at this. Thoughts on what to do if you're getting symptoms of significant meltdowns paired with increased urination following the addition of Selena Naturally Salt, transitioning from pink Himalayan salt. So, looks like the body really needs those minerals. Okay. Every time we start the slow transition, the same thing happens. She is getting less than an eighth of a teaspoon. It has been three weeks, and I'm honestly ready to drop the salt completely. Well, you're getting detox. Fabulous, Braylin. How about this? Why don't you do... Uh, you may have done this already, but why don't you do... Why don't you slowly um, transition her, meaning kind of like when people go from caffeinated coffee to decaffeinated coffee, right? Not 
this isn't really the gaps thing, but people know, like, how do you do that? You go like, oh, I drink a cup of coffee a day. Oh, now I'm going to dilute it with half decaf, half regular. Oh, now I'm going to dilute it with three quarters decaf, quarter regular. Oh, now I'm drinking decaf, right? So maybe you could do like pink Himalayan salt mostly with a little bit of the um, uh, Selena naturally salt, yeah? And then just increase it little, little bits. I think it's wonderful. I'm sorry about significant meltdowns, but obviously this child needs the minerals. Um, I would, and increased urination. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I would just do it that way. I would also perhaps bring in some other salts like Baja Gold, B-A-J-A -A Gold salt. I would perhaps put different bowls of salt on the table and let her pick the salt that she wants. That's a wonderful thing to do with children. Give them their own little bowl, little tiny bowls, right? Um, let Put salt in each one. Let her do what she's doing. Let her choose the salt she wants. She knows her body the best. That might be a good idea. All right, Muna, I always add my meat stock with vegetables like carrots, onion, zucchini, blah, blah, blah. Is that okay? That's perfect. Whatever you like, Muna, that sounds wonderful to me. I'm coming over for dinner. Okay. Dekamu. Okay, we use, we use a liver support, beet kvass, and castor oil. If we need more support, what do we need to do for a four-year-old? Um, I would be doing... Um, I would be doing detox baths every night, everyone. And I would be doing an enema once a week, even if it's not needed, quote unquote, meaning if the person is not constipated. That's my little quotes, constipated. Not constipated. Do an enema once a week. Wonderful, wonderful detoxification happens. So this is very good, but I would be adding in uh, detox baths. I have a YouTube on that, Ask the Gap Chef. On detox baths, I talk all about them, what they do, how they work, blah, 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 blah. Take a look. Um, detox baths plus maybe an enema once a week plus juicing. Juicing if you're on stage four or more or on full gaps. Good, good, good. Okay. La, 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 la. Okay, Lee Henderson says, I, wa I listened to the Body Electrics Online Summit. Yes, I love Gerald Pollack. Oh, Pollack, I got to meet him again. Uh, two, I think it was two wise traditions in a row. Amazing man, brilliant. Yes, juice, juice, juice. Ju plants necessarily have structured water in them. Yes, way to go. Make sure it's green. Green with a little bit of uh, beet. All right. Hello, Fatima. What are the symptoms parents should look out for to see if a child needs more liver support? Constipation uh, is usually the sign of a congested liver. Um, intolerance to fats, inability to tolerate a lot of fat can also be, can be a sign of a need for more liver support. Um, how about stinky armpits? How about, like, does your child stink? Uh, that means more liver support, definitely. Um, like, do their feet smell? Do their armpits smell? Um, do their feces smell, right? All this stuff. Uh, more liver support. Of course, stinky feces is also low stomach acid. Um, those types of things. Um, beets. Beets, beets, beets for liver support over there. Okay. Laura asks, for those not on GAPS, hey, this is a GAPS page. Is organic whole flour better than organic white flour? All sourdough. Of course. Yes, always. Frankly, Laura, and for those who are uh, not on GAPS, but for you, I would be doing sprouted spelt flour and then make that sourdough. But yes, wheat flour, whole grain is always better than white because of all the vitamins in the uh, exterior part of the um, grain. Okay. Oh no, Leonie, sorry. Esther Hawkins. Hello, Esther. Ha uh, ha, spell check, yes. That is funny. All right, would homemade dandelion vinegar help the liver? Yes, do it. 
Make sure you're using apple cider vinegar and throw some dandelion roots or leaves or both in there. Okay, Brea Lynn. Brea asks, I guess it's just too much at first. We will try some other brands. She will just sit and eat it from the table if I let her. Good. I know, hard to get through the meltdowns. I hear you, uh, but children know what they need. She may need to melt down. She obviously needs the minerals. Up to you. I have three different salts in my house. Four? Four different salts. One is Baja Gold, highest amount of minerals uh, in a mineral salt that I'm aware of. One is Celtic Salt from Selena Naturally, which you are using. That's the uh, coarse gray finishing salt. I call it a finishing salt. Um, I also have uh, Selena Naturally Celtic Fine Salt, and I also have their Pink Salt, um, Pink Cave Salt High Potassium, really good. So hard to get through the meltdowns. Well, you know, remembering meltdowns are die off. So what can you do? You could uh, increase the amount of uh, good um, probiotic food she's eating. You could um, increase the amount of fat she's having. You could support the body with more uh, detox baths and enemas. And if you're having a meltdown, you can't do an enema in the middle of an, a meltdown, of course, but you could, uh, prior to a meltdown, you could, after a meltdown's done, right? Remembering that um, they are just so good for detoxing the body, for sure. Hope that's helpful. Hello, Faria. Do you think it would be problematic to use the same kefir grains to make different types of milk? Cow and camel milk. Okay, so I answered this on one of the Facebook Lives lately, recently, maybe three or four weeks ago. Who knows? Um, usually, it's going to take a couple of days for them to, for the kefir grains to, quote unquote, warm up to or get um, accustomed to the new milk. So don't worry about that. Uh, use, uh, you can use them. I would not suggest going cow, camel, cow, camel, cow, camel. I'd like go cow, 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 and then transition to camel. May take a couple of days to get a robust uh, kefir going. That's my understanding. Hello, Sandy. Sandy is on. All right. Anybody else have a... Did I miss any questions? Let's see. I'm going up, 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 up. Hi, Sandy. Good to see you. All right. Uh, na, 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 na. What could be... What would be some ideas of frozen meals we could have on hand? Hmm. Frozen meals we could have on hand. Well, in terms of gaps, you could do, um, <laughs> thanks, Sandy. In terms of gaps, you could do any ca casseroles and freeze them. You can do casseroles and freeze them. What is a casserole? It's meat and vegetables that are cut up, and then you have a little bit of um, stock in there, and then you uh, bake it. So casseroles are great things to freeze and have on hand. Um Anything like chili would be a wonderful thing. Stews you can make and have on hand. Um, if you're working with beans, you can soak, sprout, or ferment them, and then you could have uh, make chili with the soaked, sprouted, or fermented lentils or white navy beans or haricots, things like that. Frozen jars of stock, yes. Frozen jars of soup, blended soups. All sorts of things like that, for sure. Hello, Marie. Can you use kefir grains to make ultra green? So Dr. Natasha says no. She would prefer that you used milk kefir as the starter for kefir cream. Um, I have used kefir grains fine uh, with culture to culture cream. Um, it really depends on how thick the cream is. So if your cream is not too thick... Grains should work fine. Um, if your cream is raw cream and it's very, very, very thick, 
like you can stand a spoon up in it, probably uh, best to use milk kefir to culture that. Um, that's my best thought. My best thought there. All right. Any other questions? What do we have? Any other questions? Uh, any other questions coming in? We've got two minutes. Oh, Anna. Hello, Anna. Hello. I suffered from kidney stones and cannot use dandelions or other bitter food. Okay. Um, we remember that kidney stones um, really respond very well to beet kvass. Beet kvass. Drinking beet tonic every day. Start with very little bit and work your way up to four or five ounces a day. Beet kvass can really help keep the kidneys clear. Also, um, apple cider vinegar in water every day. Just a teaspoon to a tablespoon and a couple of ounces of water. Yep. 420 milliliter double cream. How many kefir milk would you... With sour cream? Um, I would do about um, quarter cup, four tablespoons, Esther, oh, not Esther, Uma, four tablespoons of kefir milk. Okay, Laura, what does mushy broken pieces not formed? Half formed, half not. Maya, more fiber aggravates kids 10 years old. You know, folks, I wouldn't get too waggy over stools unless your stools are always uh, like soft serve ice cream in the bottom of the bowl, which means that you have a blown ileocecal valve or always uh, chalky, gray and floating. So what it means is that uh, I would increase the amount of probiotic foods your child is eating. Remember, the stools tell us what's going on in the whole digestive tract. So I would really, really, really increase the amount of probiotic foods. So more, um, and I would also do more protein dairy, high protein dairy, like yogurt and kefir or vegetable medley for that child, right? Because we know that high protein dairy helps the stool form or, and or more whey, W-H-E-Y. Okay. I would use half a cup, Uma. Half a cup. All right. Esther says, oh, Esther says, can you culture store-bought sour cream on the counter? Like you say, we can do yogurt. Yes, you can. Yep. Or can I use ultra-pasteurized? I would not use ultra-pasteurized. However, Esther, Esther, Get on the Weston A. Price uh, local chapter for Massachusetts. There's tons of really good raw milk and raw dairy being brought into the state, as far as I know. Jump on there, Esther, okay? So you can find good sources of raw milk and raw cream. Okay, Fatima asks, what does swollen eye bags indicate on children? Toxins. Toxic. Usually toxins, usually. Okay, like here. Look at me, I'm toxic. Doop, doop, not too bad, actually. But gray here, toxins. If it's not exhaustion, it's toxins. Really bring in the detox baths every night. The enemas at least once a week, maybe more for your child. Castor oil packs. Juicing, really good. Children love it. Um, that's what I would be doing for children that have, uh, yeah, swollen eye bags. Thanks, I've tried still really far and no cream. I'll look again, you're welcome, Esther. All right, everyone, I think we are fini for now. So we're at time. Thank you for joining me this week and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Please do check out the GAPS on Con because Dr. Natasha is teaching, I'm teaching, Lots of incredible people are teaching about all sorts of wonderful things, how to make your life easier on gaps. It's wonderful. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I will see you same gaps time, same gaps channel. We'll see you next week, everyone. Okay. Be well now.